Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by to spend a few minutes of your day with me today. It really does mean a lot to me. Now look, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the AU Star Gem 12 Mini PC that was provided to me by the folks over at Banggood. Now for complete transparency, this review is my own and they get no say over the contents of this video. No money exchanged hands and they won't even see this video before you do. Um, there will also be a link in the video description if you wanna pick one of these devices up for yourself. And there's also a coupon code down there if you wanna save a chunk of money if you pick one up before the end of July. But with that said, let's jump into taking a look at the AU Star Gem 12. Okay guys, this just arrived. This is a professional mini PC as it says there. It's the Gem series. Um, there's not really a lot going on. Uh, if we flip this over, designed by Tianbei. I, I probably screwed that up, but there's that. There's really nothing much on the other side other than some stocking inventory stuff. But on the back, let's turn this around the right way. Uh, this is the AOSTAR uh, Mini PC Gem 12. It is black. It's got an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX with 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM and uh, 512 gigs of NVMe 4 storage there, uh, 19 volts, 6.3 amps. This does have the EU plug apparently, uh, but we're gonna check that out. Also, it's got uh, RJ45 and Wi-Fi 6, and we're gonna talk more about all of these specs here in just a little bit, but, oops, let's, uh, geez, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out of its out of its packaging here. There we go, I just had to, had to pry the sides open to get a little air in there. Uh, so we've got some styrofoam there for packaging. Uh, it looks like we've got, <clears throat> oh, oh, this, that, we're gonna come back to that. User manual, um, primarily in Chinese on this side, it looks like. Oops, if I could, if I could pay attention to what I'm doing there. Um, and a little bit of English over here. Uh, it looks like we've got dual two and a half gig. We'll come back to that, but it does, it does come with this. So there's that. This thing weighs a ton. And it looks, it looks really good, but we're gonna come back to that. All right, we're gonna set that right there just so that it's teasing you. Um, and then of course our accessories down here. All right, oh man. Set all of this aside. So we've got a USB-C uh, power plug there. Um, and like I said, it's got the EU uh, plug on this end, but it did, they actually, they were nice enough to send a travel adapter for export only right there. So there's that. Uh, we've also got a mounting plate. It looks like to mount it like on the back of a, of a display or whatever. Um, and then a uh, thermal plate. There we go. That's the word I'm looking forward to help keep your SSDs, uh, NVMe drives, that sort of thing, a little bit cooler. So that's all of the accessories that it came with. And then we're gonna take a look here real quick. Some USB 3s on the front. We've got a USB 4 and an Oculink. Uh, I've actually never had either of those as options in the past. Uh, this will be my first experience with that, so I'm super excited there. We've got a headphone microphone combo jack, power button, reset there. The Oculink interface does not support hot swapping. Please power off and then do the plug and unplug operation. So there's that. Over here, lots of ventilation on the side. Love to see that, that looks really good. Uh, Type-C for the power right there. Uh, again, two and, two, two and a half gig LAN ports. Uh, HDMI and DisplayPort. I'm um, really glad that both of those are an option. And then a couple of, uh, this says super speed, so I'm guessing USB 3 there, um, but it doesn't really say, so I'm just kind of guessing as far as that's concerned. Again, more ventilation on the side, and you can actually see the heat sink, the, the fins and all that kind of stuff inside there. And on the bottom, that is probably one of the beefiest fans I've seen on a mini PC like this. Uh, I'm really, really excited to see that. Um, and of course, AOSTAR uh, Gem 12, and it's got all our power stuff there, um, and what processor it's got. So let's let's take the feet off and get the bottom off and see what it looks like on the inside. Go, love a magnetic screwdriver. I really ought to consider getting like an LTT screwdriver or something at some point maybe. Okay, so here we've got uh, the feet off of here, and of course the screws out, and just like they said, there are some wires, obviously one for the fan, and then a couple for the Wi-Fi. Pretty standard affair there. We've also got two gigs, or sorry, two sticks of DDR5 SODAM at 16 gigs a piece. Really appreciate that. We've got our, our boot drive here uh, with the uh, with the cooling plate. We've got an extra one of those uh, just in case. And I believe if we flip this over on its side, we can see what appears to be the Wi-Fi module right under there. Um, I am 
Oh, you know what? I'm stupid. I didn't even see it at first, even though it was right there. There's another slot right here. So this isn't this isn't a replacement for that. This is for the additional uh, M.2 drive that you can put right there. If I had any idea what I was talking about, this would be a better channel. Um, but this is really where all of the serviceable stuff happens, is right here on the bottom, four screws to get into it, and that's about it. So uh, I really dig what they've got going on here. But of course, now we need to plug it in, turn it on, and see what the performance numbers look like. So it's at this point that I really should have just logged in, looked at the device software and backed up the drivers, basked in the glory of the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, and of course the AMD Radeon 680M onboard graphics for a moment, and then reinstalled Windows. Not necessarily because I believe there was anything malicious about the device, but because I'm a firm believer in doing this with any device especially after some of the stuff that we've seen from other companies. Now, with that said, there is something that I do want to get out of the way here, and I'll, I'll explain a bit more as we go along. But look, I used the AU Star for about a week or two and then got this warning email from Google. Now, I thought it was kind of interesting, so I verified the sender and then clicked the link to check the activity. On the activity page, I was presented with a suspicious activity in your account header, and the body of the email called out this device specifically. Now, Google never specified what the suspicious activity was, only that it was coming from this device. I really wish I had more details about this, but Google gave me nothing to work with. Um, I wish they would be more transparent about that so you can do more proactive stuff to fix these things but they gave me nothing. Um, so it is what it is, I suppose. So it was at this point that I opened a command prompt and ran a quick command to back up all of the drivers on the device and then created my Windows 11 installation USB so I could just do a full reinstall of Windows. I honestly feel it's just better to be safe than sorry at this point. Also, it's kind of a good thing that I decided to run a backup of my device drivers um, because once the reinstall of Windows was done, uh, Windows didn't have a copy of the Intel uh, i226 V two and a half gig ethernet drivers. So because I had the drivers, I was able to get uh, all of my hardware back up and running in no time with basically no issues. Also, I decided to pick up a new cheap Windows 11 key for the device, just in case. Look, I know ultimately it doesn't matter, but I had my reasons, but that that is a story for an entirely different video. In fact, I've even already written the script for that video, so I definitely get subscribed and turn on notifications if you want to know what happened there. So once I had the system back up and running, I ran some benchmark tests. Uh, 3D Mark Time Spy scored a 2678 with graphics at 2392 and the CPU at 8315. A CPU profile scored between 912 for single thread and 6535 for max threads. Night score, which honestly for some reason is my favorite test, uh, scored a 25,267 with a graphics at 29,719 and the CPU score 13,668. Um, I also ran Furmark and that scored a 1529 at 25 FPS. I also decided to run Crystal Diskmark and the numbers are here on the screen as there are a lot of them to try to go through here. I figure I'll just put them on the screen and you can look at them for yourself. Overall, I was actually really happy with the numbers across all of these different tests and eventually ended up just using the device as my daily driver for a couple of weeks and it's been a beast of a little machine. Uh, my daily tasks are pretty much, you know, just like social media, checking emails, paying bills, that sort of thing. And it just made light work of all of that. Um, but I also like to do a little gaming here and there. Like I'm not a big gamer, but occasionally I like to pop up a game and play for a little while to just zone out. So uh, I tried Fallout 4, Watch Dogs 2, Rocket League, and I also tried Cyberpunk 2077. Now let's be really clear about this. There were some compromises made in gaming. Like all of the more intense games had to be played at medium settings with A&D's adrenaline game setting set to performance mode. But once I had that enabled and my games turned down a bit, I was able to usually game between 45 and 60 FPS in everything but cyberpunk, and that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone here. Even with the game settings turned down, the frame rates of cyberpunk weren't great and the game just really wasn't playable. But with esports titles like Rocket League, the AO Star really did hold its own without issue. And I even managed to score a couple of goals over the course of several matches. Now, like I said, I'm not really much of a gamer across the board. Like I'll play a game here and there, 
But most of the intense stuff that happens on my PC is video editing. Uh, in fact, the, the, the first, well, the last couple of videos, which were the first two videos of the Open Media Vault 7 series, both of those were edited on this AU Star machine. Um, and it really just held its own all of the way through. So the, the second OMV video in this series was like 14 minutes and 36 seconds long. And the AU Star Gem 12 actually managed to render that in four minutes and 29 seconds. Keeping in mind that was 1080p, that's what I'm doing my videos in lately, but for it to be able to render a 14 and a half minute video in four and a half minutes, I was actually really, really impressed with that. So one of the issues that I did run into with the with video editing and, and that sort of thing is that 16 gigs of RAM just wasn't enough for both Windows 11 and Adobe. Look, I know I know I can go in and change settings and that sort of thing, but 16 gigs just isn't a lot when you're doing video production. So I posted a tweet or whatever they're called now, and the folks over at Kingston reached out and hooked me up with 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and two two terabyte NVMe four drives. So what I decided to do was leave the 512 gig drive in there and put in one of the two terabyte drives in the other slot. Then I used Disk Genius to clone my 512 gig drive over to my two terabyte drive, then moved that drive over to where the 512 gig drive was and put in the other two terabyte drive. Then I decided, of course, I should rerun all of the tests and gaming that I had done previously. And honestly, the test results weren't all that different. Um, that is until I got to Crystal Dusk Mark. And again, the numbers were relatively close within margin of error, except for the write speeds. The sequential write speeds more than doubled and the random write speeds went up by more than a thousand points. And honestly, this made me want to see what would happen if I re-rendered the same Open Media Vault video from before and it managed to render it in three minutes and 22 seconds. Now look, that's not nothing, right? That's approximately 25% faster than before. And eventually those minutes will add up. So if you want to check out the gear that Kingston sent, I'll have links to all of that in the video description as well as basically everything else that we talk about in this video. Now look, the reason that I've spent so much time talking about video editing and gaming and that sort of thing, uh, rather than talking about, you know, home servers and Docker and Proxmox and all of that other stuff is that gaming and video editing are actually really taxing on your system's resources. And I, in my, my opinion, they will show whether or not a system is going to be reliable, stable, usable, the whole bit. So with that said, um, I can say that using the AU Star Gem 12 has been a bit of an eye-opening experience for me. Uh, it's really shown me how far mini PCs have come over the years. And honestly, I, I expect that this device will be my primary daily driver for a while, unless of course, somebody wants to send me something to try to dethrone it. As I showed at the beginning of this video, uh, the device does have two, two and a half gig ethernet ports on it and Wi-Fi. The network on it has been rock solid with no issues. Um, there are a few USB 3 ports on it, but honestly, I wish there were more. However, I understand that this is a mini PC and they, they do what they got to do to make things fit. And again, all of that has been super, super reliable as well. So I haven't had a chance to check out the Oculink port just yet. I don't have anything to connect to it, but I've seen some cool external GPU setups that I would love to try uh, just to see how much we can really step up the performance of the AU Star Gem 12. Also, one of the things that I noticed um, is that the device is remarkably quiet. Um, like I was wondering about the fans entirely, but I did install fan control on it and, and bumped up the fan speeds just to bring the temperatures down a little bit. And of course that does come with a compromise of making the device a little louder, but if you're playing games, listening to music, whatever, you don't hear the fans. They're actually really, really quiet, uh, even when they do ramp up a bit. So overall, the AU Star Gem 12 has been a great little device. I've been super excited to use it. Honestly, I'm not sure what was going on with that Google alert, but again, I did decide to play it safe and reinstall uh, Windows 11 just to make sure. Um, and as I mentioned, I have been able to do some gaming, some video editing, and of course my daily grind online. And it's been a pleasurable, if not surprising experience. So again, I wanna thank Banggood for sending over the AU Star for me to review and share with you. And I wanna thank Kingston for sending over the RAM and storage upgrades for it. Also links to everything like we talked about earlier will be in the video description. So if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, don't forget to check out that discount code that's good through the end of July this year. Uh, and with that said, I think I just wanna wrap this up and say thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today. And I'll talk to you in the next video.